Hi everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com and I'm excited to share with you my outside the box ideas that I created with the Ho 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 October 2022 Paper Pumpkin Kit from Stampin' Up. These kits are delivered to me each month and contain everything that I need to make fun creative paper crafting cards and projects. This October kit contains supplies for making nine festive Christmas cards, three of three different designs. And like each kit, I've got my publication with directions, full color illustrations, details about the kit, and a link to access a how-to video so I can assemble the cards or project as shown. I've also got stamps and ink that can be used again and again even after the other kit consumables are used up. This October kit included an early espresso ink pad and this exclusive stamp set. The kits are a Stampin' Up! product, so the colors, images, and supplies always coordinate with many other Stampin' Up! products. I'll be using some of these in the alternate projects I create for you today. You can find the items that I used listed below and linked to my online store. You can also look for links for learning more about paper pumpkin kits, starting your subscription through me so I can spoil you with exclusive ideas, gifts, and prizes, joining my Paper Pumpkin fan club on Facebook where you'll see even more alternate project ideas shared daily, and if you're watching my video on YouTube, a link to my website where I've shared photos of the projects you're going to see today. I received a large clear block in my first paper pumpkin kit to use with all my future stamps. That tool and my scissors are all that I need for completing my kits as is. But you'll notice that I substitute that block for the ergonomic Stampin' Up! blocks. I also use a larger version of the ink pad and some additional adhesive, such as my stamp and seal. You won't need these, but they're available products from Stampin' Up! and they're a bit easier and quicker for me to use while I demonstrate in my video. By the way, if you're looking for ideas for past kits, visit my website at stampyourartout.com, click on Paper Pumpkin in the top menu, and then choose Recent or Older Posts. I've been creating and sharing alternates since March of 2013 when Paper Pumpkin first began. I'm excited to create with you, so let's get started. I hope you caught part one of this um, two-part series so you could see how I took the elements from three of the kit cards and turned them into 12. Yes, you can quadruple the cards in your kit with just added cardstock, envelopes, and some embellishments. Super easy to do. You'll want to catch that. Make sure that you look in the description of this video so you can see a link to that. But I couldn't keep going in that video because it was already way too long, so I made a part two. And we're going to be doing some other projects in this one. We're first going to take this cherry cobbler cardstock and we're going to cut it in half. So we're going to make a piece, oops, in half, there you go. We're going to make a piece that is five and a half inches by eight and a half. And we're going to score it in a couple places. We're going to score it at, um, let's see here, two and three eighths. So we're going to go to the two inch mark. And just before the half inch is this longer mark here. That's two and three eighths. We're going to score it. And then we're going to score it again at four and a quarter. We're going to make a 3D container. One of my team members just recently um, shared with us this box idea in one of our online team events. So we were able to um, recreate it using our own products. It was really fun. What I'm doing now is I'm scoring in this direction every inch. So I scored it one, two, three. Now I'm on inch number four. And we're just doing that all the way across. And in fact, um, I'm going to even add a cut and I should have been doing that already. So let's, let's start it at number seven. So I'm scoring and then I'm going to cut up to that first score line that we made in the other direction. And I'm going to do that at eight inches and I'm going to cut up to that first score line. And then because I already did these scores, I'm just going to line it back up again move the scoring blade out of the way and give it a cut up to that first score mark. I'm going to do that all the way up through here. You could cut these lines with your scissors, but it goes so much faster with the paper trimmer. Two more cuts. We'll do the two inch and then we'll do the one inch. And the one inch is hidden underneath the arm of the trimmer here. So if you feel better about, you know, flipping your cardstock around and doing it that way, you certainly can. 
And what I mean by that is you can use the one inch mark on this side and lay your paper that way. It's easier to hold on to, so we could have done it like that. Okay, so now we have our um, half, of, half of a sheet of cardstock. It's cut in half, so you could get two of these boxes out of one sheet. We've scored it two and three eighths of an inch in this direction, and then another um, score mark at four and a quarter inches. We cut up into all of these pieces here, the longer sections, not the shorter up here, but the longer. This is gonna be the bottom of the box. And these are all gonna be little strips that um, collapse together on top of each other. Um, we're gonna make a, an eight-sided box. Um, this half-inch section over here is gonna become the tabs that connect the, um, this side to this side. So I'm now gonna actually cut into those pieces. We're gonna remove this bottom one here because we don't need it, okay? What we've got here are the places where we're gonna connect. We have a connection piece up here, and we have a connection piece here. This one we're just gonna angle cut because it's gonna be a full tab. So we're just cutting in at an angle. But on this one, we're actually gonna cut more of a triangle. So we're gonna start at the middle point here, and we're gonna cut from that middle out to that edge. And that's just gonna make it easier to connect our tab to the intricate little um, folding that we're gonna do up here. So we're gonna do that next. We're gonna do some folding. And move the trimmer out of the way. We're gonna bring in a tool called the Stamp and Pierce Mat. And I'm laughing because I really should be using this more often. This is the mat that you can, you know, do piercing into, but you can also take when you're using photopolymer stamps. It's a great tool to have underneath when you're stamping. You get a more even um, image when you're stamping. So I highly recommend getting one of these. But another thing you can do with it is you can use the scoring end of the take your pick tool or your bone folder, or the back of a butter knife, something that allows you to create a score mark or a crease free-handed. And what I mean by that is we're not laying it into our trimmer to do any scoring. We are not laying it into the scoring, um, uh, score, the simply scored tool. We're just using a ruler or a straight edge and our, our hand as if we've got a pencil in our hand. We're gonna do some freehand scoring. We're going to connect, and I'm just going to fold this because we're going to fold it eventually anyways. That way you can see all the marks there. We're going to connect these points where the folds intersect to the upper diagonal corner. So this is going to connect to here, and this is going to connect to here. We're going to make little X's in each of these upper sections. So all of these little areas are going to get little X marks. So I'm going to connect to that point, to that point. And I'm doing this over this, um, again, this mat here, this uh, Stamp and Pierce mat, because it's going to give me a cushion underneath so that when I press that stylus tool area down in, it creates a, an indent and allows me to do some folding there. Okay, And don't press too hard that you cut, so you want to make sure that you're being careful not to press too hard. You'll, you'll get the feel of it when you start to do your scoring. And you'll see parallel lines being formed. All of these should be parallel to each other. You'll notice that I kind of had my ruler off a little bit there and I scored accidentally in the wrong. It's okay. I mean, these, these little areas will manipulate. So don't, don't worry about being so precise that um, you go too slow. Just have fun with it. So as I mentioned before, Teresa Glow, um, one of my team members, had shared this idea with all of us during one of our recent team events. And I had made these kind of boxes years ago and was so excited to relearn how to do it because I had forgotten. Um, so she gave some fabulous tips along the way. And I am very, very glad that I get to share that now with you. So thank you, Teresa. Okay, what I'm doing now is I'm flipping this over 
and I'm going to use this edge here that's still straight as a guide. I'm lining it up with the one inch mark on my trimmer and I'm going to put a score line from here straight up. So I'm going to get my cutting blade out of the way and I'm just going to put my scoring blade straight down in the middle right here and push and make it go up and away. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a score mark just in that section that's going to go like that. Okay. So these folds are going to fold this way. And then this one is actually going to pop up. It's going to pop up. So we're going to have like this, this pinched look here. Do you see that? So that's what we're going to go for on all of our, all of our sections here. And that's why adding that extra score line is going to help. But I flipped it over because then I can again use the one inch marks instead of doing one and a half, two and a half. If you flip it over, you're just going halfway in. And if we add this extra half inch to it, we've already got a half inch plus a half inch is one inch. So now we're going to move this to the two inch mark and we're going to score from the middle out and move it to the three inch mark. And I'm just looking at this edge the whole time I'm doing it. It might get a little bit trickier here. I probably should have kept this tab intact because <laughs> now it's harder for me to see. That's okay. I'm using the point. All right, so we've got all of those vertical marks that just go from the middle of the X's on up. And we're going to do some folding now. So we're going to fold all of these in this direction. And then we're going to fold all of these in this direction. And then we're going to pinch. Okay. So we're going to pull those together and pinch. Okay. The next step is to grab a punch. And I have my old crop dial that Stampin' Up! used to sell. If you have any kind of eighth inch punch, that is best. You can also pierce it with your piercing tool. But um, this allows you to get a larger ribbons going through. So what I'm doing, I'm just going to knock out the centers there, is I'm punching out, after I've pinched, I'm punching a circle in that triangular section that's right there. So when you pinch this, you have a triangle. So we'll do it again. You can see there's a triangle section that's formed there. I'm going to punch right in that section there. And I'm just going right for the middle of the section. So the eight punches that I made created 16 holes. All right, the next step is to connect. Actually, we're, let's go ahead and decorate um, these strips first because it's going to be easier. So now we're going to take pieces from our kit. We're going to use this envelope and this Santa. We're going to grab our trimmer again. And we're going to open up the envelope. So I'm just going to trim off about a 16th of an inch. So on this trimmer, if you're covering up this dark space here, just to the right of the channel of the trimmer, you're cutting off a sixteenth of an inch. Okay, and then we'll flip it over so that we still have this straight edge right to the top of the trimmer. I'm covering up the dark spot here, dark edging, and slicing. And now I've got an easy way to open my envelope. Okay, these pieces here, we want to cut a, a section that is Mm, seven by one and three quarter inches. So if I bring that ruler back in, you can see that seven inches does not happen all the way across in this direction. So we're going to, we're going to turn it this way instead, and we're going to get seven inches out of it here. I'll trim off this lower edge here. And that gives me a straight section right in that area. And because I want it one and three quarter inches, I'm going to go ahead and bring that straight edge to the one and three quarter inch mark here. And then we'll rotate it. We'll trim off the rounded edge and we'll start cutting every seven eighths of an inch. When we get to this score mark, we're going to have to kind of skip over it. Okay. 
With designer paper, if you start off with a seven inch piece and you're doing seven eighths of an inch, you're gonna get eight pieces from that strip. And they're all gonna connect to each other. So if you have like a pattern, an ongoing pattern, then you can see that pattern flow. Like this one here, I mean, if I flip it, it doesn't make much of a difference. But with an envelope um, that has maybe this pattern in it, if I flip it, I would have flowers on the bottom or inside snowflake pieces on the bottom, inside snowflake pieces on the top, you know what I mean? On a pattern such as this one here, you definitely notice if you did not line up everything when we, does, when we cover up the box. All right, so let's go ahead and keep cutting our 7 eighths of an inch. And here I got to the score mark, so I'm going to go ahead and just trim off that scored section. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and adhere these. And I'm just going to put a couple lengths of seal adhesive in the middle of each of those sections. Now it's time to assemble and then add up the rest of our decorations afterwards. This is going to be an area that gets some adhesive and this area here. Um, you could use seal adhesive, you could use the glue dots in the kit. You could go to a past paper pumpkin box and you could find some of their tear and tape type of adhesive. This stuff is really great. Go ahead and add a piece that's kind of angled in here. And you can see I didn't quite get it all the, or I didn't fill it in all the way there, and that's okay. And I've got extra, so I'm going to put that over the edge. But I am going to come back in, and I'm just going to try to get that corner a bit more. I want to get as much adhesive in there as possible. I could also use like a liquid glue. Um, the multi-purpose liquid glue is great for um, more of a permanent bond for boxes. So fold on those score lines and then press one side down and press the other one on top. Do it here. We could do it here. You know, you just want to make sure that you're connecting your two ends with the box flat. It's going to be so much easier to do. Then we can use our bone folder, give it a good burnish just to really bond that adhesive into the box. And you can see that by, you know, smooshing this down in all these different directions, I've still got a nice flat piece because I scored everything evenly in this direction. Okay, next, we're going to flip it upside down and we're going to connect our bottom pieces. So what is the front of our box and what's the back? The back of the box in my mind is this section because I've got my connection here and this is where they overlapped right in through here. So that's going to be my back panel which means the opposite one is the front panel. I'm going to make this my front panel and I'm just going to remember that front panel by kind of marking it like that. That way, in fact, let's mark it in this direction. That way when I start folding in the bottom pieces, I know which one is the front and which one is the back. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with, um, let's, let's start with this, this one here. Okay, so just either to the left or to the right of the back one. So we're going to fold that piece in and then the opposite one is going to come on top. So the one that's closer to the front is going to come on top of the one that's closer to the back. And that way we still have our seam to the back side of the box. So this one's going to get adhesive. This one, of course, is going to get adhesive and this one. And then you can pick either one of these two because they're the side pieces. So I'm just going to choose that one there and I'm going to add adhesive to all of these right now just to prepare them. It was hard to show you that in the camera. I had to kind of pull all of these up in a way too. So let's go back to the front of the box. Here's the front. These are the ones that have the adhesive on it. And we're going to start with this one here. And we're just going to go across 
and this one's going to connect down on top. And they're going to connect pretty much perfectly. They're going to line up pretty darn well right on top of each other. Okay. The next one that's going to go is going to be the opposite. So I'm going to bring this one down and then this one here. And once you have the two opposites, so you've made an X, then your box has a really nice shape to it. It's a nice um, eight sided box. Okay. Again, here's my front. That's the one I'm going to do last. So the next one that comes in is the side and they're going to overlap each other and then the back to the front. Okay. And now we don't have any visible seams in these three areas here. Now it's time to go ahead and bring the top together, which you'll be able to open up again. So you can open it later to put a gift in there. The ribbon is the part that holds this together and it cinches it all up and makes this fun little design on the top. So I'm going to use some of this ribbon here. We're just going to pull out 12 inches of it. And then we're going to use one of our blends markers. The colors that are in the designer paper from the envelope are Sweet Sorbet and Cherry Cobbler. And then of course we've got the shaded spruce green in there as well. So I've brought in my Sweet Sorbet dark uh, blends marker. I'm going to pull off the cap and I'm just going to run that color along the bottom edge here of this beautiful vanilla and gold ribbon. You can see that that color goes through to the opposite side. And it's going to take a little minute to dry. So when you do this, give it some time to kind of dry off. But we're just going to run that the whole length of the ribbon. And I am kind of going in the center there too, because this color is dark enough where it's actually grabbing onto the center fibers of the ribbon, even though it's pretty sheer in there. Okay, so let's just set that aside for a minute. So here you can see I did the same ribbon and I wanted to show you the difference in colors just by adding a blends marker. So you can make your ribbon different color if you start with a vanilla or a white base. But you could also bring in twine. And so I have uh, a bunch of this twine. It comes with two rolls. I have three in there because I just combine things together. It's called Simply Elegant Trim and it has silver and gold. And so um, I have a second box that I'm going to show you after this that I made with the kit contents also. And that one has the, the, um, the metallic twine in it. All right, so my ribbon has dried. I flipped over my grid paper so we have a clean white surface again. And I'm going to just fold my um, ribbon kind of into a little point here. And we're going to use that to kind of make a needle. Um, starting from the front, either side of the front I should say, we're going to start poking it in and you see how I'm grabbing the two that I punched together. So I still have that V underneath and I'm just going with that pinch that we originally created with the hole punch and just giving it here. I'm going to bring it through a little bit further and we're going to go right into those holes. But you're, you're going to thread this through all the pinched sections. Keep them pinched outward towards you, not inward. Okay, and as you pull your ribbon a little tighter, it starts to form the design on the top of the box. And we're just going to push that on in as we cinch the ribbon tighter and tighter and tighter. You see what's happening here? Isn't that beautiful, the little design it makes? And you could use 12, more than 12 inches of ribbon if this was, you know, too hard to work with, but 12 inches of ribbon is about what you'll need in order to make your bow. So we're just going to go ahead now and tighten this up and do a little bow at the top. And again, you can just undo the bow, loosen up the top, and you can add your gift. So now what are we going to do to decorate the front? And where's our front again? Our front is right here. <laughs> so I've got this cute little Santa from the kit. And I thought I'd bring in the coordinating stamp. The coordinating stamp stamped right down onto that Santa 
gives us a very detailed looking Santa. You could use him alone like that. He looks great by, by himself that way, but this just makes him have a smile too. Oh, and like I shared in my second video, it's nice to have a darker surface. You have a contrast between the outside edge of this piece and the um, um, what's underneath it. And there we have our stamped Santa. And I'm just going to add him with a couple dimensionals from the kit. And there's our happy Santa box. You could put words there if you want to. Um, let's add some um, little embellishments. Let's grab some of these fun festive pearls. I'm just going to squeeze the tip of my take your pick tool to get that gummy end into more of a ball and we'll just add a few little gold pearls here and there. That way it kind of ties in with the ribbon with the gold edging in the ribbon. Isn't he super cute? So I did another box. Um, again, we just added ribbon and we added a blends marker to color it, but you could use like white ribbon or whatever. And then we added cardstock and um, you could use the embellishments from the kit. The embellishments from the kit, you have some vanilla um, epoxy little drop things here. So that's where the vanilla color comes in, by the way. I was confused at that when it said on the back side that vanilla is one of the colors in the kit. Um, none of the card stocks have vanilla in it. It's just the embellishments, just so you know. But here we have the um, other box that I made. So this one has a snowflake from the kit. It has a sentiment, um, and this piece is cut from scraps. Don't throw these scraps away. You can use the scraps for sentiment strips and for punching out extra pieces and things like that. I used early espresso card stock. I used the um, elegant trim, the silver, and I just, I used two strands of it, so that's why it looks like there's a lot here. I used two strands of it. Um, this is this envelope here, right? So I just trimmed off, because it has two rows of these, I trimmed off the top portion there. And I actually made them just slightly narrower so that I could just use one strip. And I cut between every two little blossomy or snowflakey looking thing there. And I alternated them back and forth. So these strips, by the way, if you're curious, they measure just under one and three quarter inches by just under seven eighths. So I went a sixteenth of an inch smaller in those directions. But I didn't really measure this way. I looked between the flowers and tried to just cut between the flowers. Um, I used a rhinestone basic jewel for the center of the snowflake. And then for the bottom of the boxes, you can really like punch out a circle or this, this punch here is great for it. Um, you can take and place a piece over the bottom so it kind of covers up all of that little crisscross design stuff going on. This is Teresa's box that she made me and she did the same thing where she die cut a circle and put it on the bottom of her box. What I'm thinking of, which would be great, is to take that stamp, the one that says deliver to, and stamp that on the bottom side of this. Now you could use, for this box here, you could use either side because they're just as light. Oh, I see some envelope adhesive there. So we'll stamp on this side. You can stamp that on there. Write who the box is for. You can take and add it to the bottom of your box. And now I can personalize who I want that box to go to. Everyone can just lift up the bottom and they can see who it's for. So there we go. Let's do the next project. It's a card and it's based on another idea that um, my one of my team members um, shared with us. It's actually my upline team member. Um, she is super creative all, as well. There's a lot of creative creative people that are in this um, community of paper crafters. And if you are interested in joining that community of paper crafters, this month of October allows you to get the starter kit 
and officially become a Stampin' Up! demonstrator slash discount shopper um, for a really great deal. Normally the kit is up to $125 worth of product for $99 plus tax, shipping is free. But during the month of October 2022, you can get the starter kit in the U.S. Um, same price, but you get to choose up to $155 worth of product. Again, free shipping is just $99 plus tax. And you can choose anything on your wish list. So I have a link for that in the description of my video. You want to make sure you check that out. This is the card that Susan demonstrated for our group. So you can see it's a fun fold card and it's using some of our beautiful products from our current mini catalog. So I'm going to show you a version of this fun fold card and we're going to bring in some designer paper that I think fits this kit pretty well. We've got some Santas in it, some adorable Santa faces that you can see have that same kind of cartoonish look to it, you know, and we've got snowflakes in here. Um, lots of similar imagery. So this is one side of the designer paper and not all my pieces are 12 by 12, but they do come in 12 by 12 pieces. Um, and then the flip side of those pieces have more of kind of a, a subtle design. So we've got snowflakes, stripes, ho, 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 which is one of the sentiments in our kit. Um, polka dots and the colors are very similar too. We got fa la la and we got some um, showering uh, snowflakes coming down. The paper that I'm using is called, sorry about that, Santa Express. So, and it's even got Bermuda Bay in it, just like our kit too. So, Bermuda Bay, Cajun Craze, Early Espresso, Evening Evergreen, Granny Apple, Green Mint Macaron, Petal Pink, Poppy Parade, Sahara Sand, and Shaded Spruce are the colors that are highlighted in this. We're going to grab shaded spruce, so a sheet of this, and we're going to trim it in this direction in half. So I'm going in half so that half of eight and a half is four and a quarter. We're going to bring it to the four and a quarter inch mark and cut it there. And then we're going to cut these two pieces down just a little bit. So you're going to have a little extra cardstock from each, which you can use on another project. So don't throw them away. Um, for this piece, we want to cut it to eight and a half inches. And then we want to cut it, or I'm sorry, score it at five and a half inches. Okay, this is going to be this side of the card that opens up like that. Then from this piece, we want to have the zigzag section that comes out. And that piece is going to be nine and three quarter inches long. So these are extra, set them aside for something else. We're going to score at every three and a quarter inches. Three and a quarter times three is nine and three quarters. So we're doing three and a quarter plus another three and a quarter is six and a half. And then plus another three and a quarter is the nine and three quarters. And that's how you get that look. And this piece is going to get added here like that. So that's how the card comes together and it closes, it stays shut by having a, a little section on top like an embellishment or a layer piece with a sentiment or whatever. Let's bring her card back in so you can peek at that one more time. So that's how it closes and that's how it opens. And this is where they're connected. The two pieces are connected right there. She's got this really fun decorative strip in there. Not a necessary thing to do, but it does hide the seam. So let's use our bone folder. I've already pre-cut several of the pieces of designer paper for this card. So this should be a fairly quick project. We're just going to crease all of these folds just a little bit firmer just so our card lies flatter when we put it together. Okay, and so this is the way it's going to go. So on the front, I want to have my Santa become the part that holds this flap down. And my Santa can go kind of a, against a more busy background, so we could put it against um, this snowflake piece. So that's the flip side of the trees paper. And then we've also got um, some paper that's going to go on the... Actually, I'm going to just leave that blank. I'm going to leave that blank because I'm going to add the ho ho hoes 
in this section here. And I'm going to add a snowflake like that. So it's going to kind of look like, well, we'll figure it out. But they're going to connect somehow like that. And then when we open it up, this will stay on this side. Our Santa and our, our snowflake paper will kind of disappear there. And for the inside, I've already pre-cut our Ho 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 paper because we're using the Ho 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 sentiment. And that's going to go over here. This paper is going to go here because it's fun and bright and cheerful. We're going to add a snowflake to the inside. And I think I'm going to use that rectangle that we cut out of the frame that you really don't need to use for anything. But that's going to become our white layer on the inside of our card. I also cut one more strip because I think it's going to be fun to have some snowflakes that when the card is closed, you see this little white section here? I'm just going to decorate that up a little bit too. Now I could use the envelope liners for my designer paper if I wanted to. You can certainly do that, but sometimes we want to use the envelopes for the envelopes, right? So by bringing in some extra cardstock, and plus it's nice to know what other kinds of products coordinate with our kits, and I just think this paper is pretty darn good. So what are the measurements for all of our pieces? This piece here is three by five. So it, I'm sorry, three by four. So it fits into that four and a quarter inch tall space and the three and a quarter inch wide section. So again, three by four. This piece is a little bit narrower because this section's only three inches wide. So this piece is two and three quarter inches wide instead. It's not the full three inches, it's two and three quarter inches wide by four inches tall. Same thing with this one because it goes on the opposite side. It is two and three quarter inches by four inches tall. And then this little strip here is just a half of an inch by four inches. And we're going to add that so that we can see most of the snowflakes along this edge. When you're adding this piece to this piece, you can bring that piece, you know, over a little bit or further over this way. It's up to you um, because either way, you'll be able to adjust where this piece here that holds it is going to go. You can see I've stamped my Santa already. I'm going to go ahead and add some adhesive to the back side of this Z, Z fold area. And again, it's going to open out like that. So you want to make sure that when you place it down, you get this kind of opening. We're just going to lay that down so that we see a peak of that designer paper. Like that. Okay. There we go. And now you can see that seam in there. It doesn't bother me. Um, I'm not going to worry about it uh, being needing to be covered or anything, but you could add designer paper up to that seam. Here's our sentiment layer. We can add our snowflake onto it. I haven't quite figured out what I want to stamp on there yet, but I know that this is going to be the sentiment layer. I think maybe that's the way I'm going to do it, like that. Kind of ties in with the seam that way, right? So I just added a bunch of glue dots to the back side of my Ho 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 piece. I'm going to pick off the backings. And you'll see that that adhesive is not fully on each letter. But we're going to solve that problem by just folding that adhesive back over onto itself. Because this is pretty thin adhesive, these glue dots are pretty thin, so you can do that. And now as I'm adding these glue dots to the back side of the vellum, I'm not really too worried about that adhesive showing through this little area of the O's because you won't see the edges of that adhesive. So I'm sticking glue dots there and in wider areas where maybe like the H bases are showing through. Okay, that should give me enough adhesive. Now if you, if you do get... Um, if this kind of area is too much stress to, to try to add adhesive to, you could use like the two-way, or I'm sorry, not the two-way glue pen, the multi-purpose liquid glue. The multi-purpose liquid glue is a great liquid adhesive that is pretty easy to use. And then you can just 
kind of draw a little thin line of glue to follow the words. So we're going to add the ho 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 to the front here. And at the same time, we'll just lay these down. This little snowflake is going to tuck behind the ho ho ho's like that. So there's that. And then my Santa has plenty of room to be the main um, character on display up here. Because we want this to be able to open and close, we want to be aware of where that's going to come in and out. So I'm going to put it he uh, dimensionals behind the back side here, sort of going down through the middle. And I want to give it a good dimensional base. I don't want just one dimensional back there because it's got to hold on to it. So we're going to add that. There's the front and the inside of our card will stamp. And I'm going to use this long sentiment. I'm going to ink up the word tis the season. And then I'm going to clean that off and we're going to ink up the other portion. And now we've made our sentiment look a little bit different than how it came in the kit. Add some adhesive to the back side. We'll add our glue dots to the big snowflake. I had to add a few more snowflakes. <laughs> so there is, there is our finished project. Adorable, isn't it? Thank you, Susan, for that great fun fold idea. I have two more projects to share with you and they are scrapbook pages. So I'm gonna bring in some 12 by 12 cardstock. I'm using for my first page, the 12 by 12 Early Espresso. And for the second page, I'm using Crumb Cake. Both of them come from the Neutrals pack of 12 by 12 cardstock. So here I have cards that I made from the first video, uh, the one that um, where I quadrupled the cards in the kit. And all of these cards are the inspiration for the page that I'm going to create first. I love the element of the envelope that is cut down the center. Um, so we're going to make a strip that is four and a quarter inches wide, just like the card. And we're going to lay that onto our 12 by 12 early espresso, sort of in that area. And then I'm going to take this envelope and we're going to cut it down the middle. So if the, if the envelope is five and three quarters of an inch, then our middle area would be just under three. So it's two and seven eighths. I'm gonna mark that with a pencil. And then from there, two and seven eighths um, with two inches on each side of it because this is four and a quarter, so I wanna make the panel four inches wide. So we'll do two inches this way and two inches this way. So what we'll do is we'll just place this envelope onto our trimmer so that that mark is lined up with the two inch mark. And it doesn't have to be like super exact, but we're gonna get it as close as possible. So there's the two inch mark there, and then we'll, from here, we'll just measure four inches. And now we have this envelope that we can open up and have spread down our page like that. Then I've got a card base that has the light bluish color on it. I'm just gonna cut that in half. And that'll create a place for a photo to be mounted. We could use this one for a photo mount as well. I'm not sure how I'm gonna use that quite yet. I do love this piece too, so I'm gonna bring that in and that banner. And we may even be able to use these pieces like we did in the first video as accent pieces, so I won't throw those away. I'll bring in a snowflake or two from the, um, from the kit, but I've also got snowflakes from the wonderful snowflakes pack. 
They are just the same kind of um, paper and they just have a slightly different look to them, but close enough where uh, they, they work with the kit pretty well. So I did some rearranging and uh, came up with this basic layout, which I think I like. And my plan is to put like this card here to put Santa and his reindeer up higher on the page. Um, I do love the sentiment that um, this tis the season to be jolly because that works with a scrapbook page pretty well. And I think I'm going to stamp that on this piece here along with ho 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 um, and maybe maybe a snowflake stamp. And then I've got the star that I want to stamp here and there on the background uh, early espresso on early espresso. The page is coming together fairly quickly. This is the half of the card that had the blue on it and I decided to just use the white. I'm going to trim it down to four and an eighth inch though. Uh, digital photos are processed at four inches by five and three eighths sometimes. So I'm going to go ahead and trim that down so it fits those. So this is now five and a half by four and an eighth and that'll just slip under like that. This one will do the same. We'll trim that down to four and an eighth by five and a half. And then this is that half of the cardstock, right? So that's four and a quarter by 11. This piece I didn't trim at all. This comes from the kit. So I'll, I think you have all the measurements now. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just adhere all of these elements down. Okay, I have most of my elements on the page on there now, and um, I raised this up on dimensionals and this up on dimensionals. I left space under this spot here so I could slip the photo that will be going onto this mat all the way onto that mat. Um, that's why I have the dimensional back in here. And usually I do my stamping after I've stuck on everything, and then I kind of stamp around it. But I kind of like the idea that I got excited and stamped first because it helped to guide me and remind me where I was putting all these pieces um, initially. And I think I like that layout. I'm going to bring in some of the festive pearls now. So my inspiration, again, were from these three cards. I love the idea of the pearls with the snowflakes. Um, I love the idea of the sleigh going across the starry sky. Um, I love this piece here. And I love that this element stuck out and had something special on it and kind of tied in. Plus, I love the tucking of the snowflakes. So those cards inspired this page layout. It's only got places for two photos, but if I were to make a matching, uh, like a two page spread, I would probably have pro like maybe six more photos on this side that I could add. So this would be like the boom, here it is kind of page, and this would have the photos and the extra journaling. I hope that you enjoyed that one. Let's do the other one now. My second of the two pages were inspired by these two cards. I really love this and think this will be a great title for the page. Um, and I loved this piece here. I also love the candy cane striping. 
So we're going to bring in that piece that became the stencil on that card. And I've already done the lower right corner. I'm going to do the upper left corner. So we're just going to line this up and we're going to use post-it notes to hold this in place. I just have some sticky notes here. And the sticky notes just kind of help ensure that I won't be using my blending brush beyond this area. I've turned this piece over to the white side because I may be using the other side. I'm using crumb cake cardstock. And I'm using my blending brush to blend in that color all the way across. You can see a pattern already forming there. Um, you can lift it up on the corner and peek and see if you want it darker in some areas. Having some scrap paper set aside, you can kind of lighten the color if you need to. But I decided I wanted it darker up through here, so I'm not worried too much about lightening it. And I'm doing the whole section here. But now I'm going to remove the sticky notes, post-it notes, and I'm going to shift this. So I'm going to bring it over and line it up with the ones that I've just done. And you can kind of go by the guy, you know, the lines that you see here to make sure that it's lining up. And then we're going to sticky note that down again. I'm not worried about putting a sticky note onto this edge because I know that this part is already done. This is the part I've lined up. So I don't really need to use my blending brush any further than this section. Another thing that I want to do is just like in that other corner, I want to angle it. So if this is the last one I did, I want to do this, 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 this right in through here. Okay? And it's okay if I go beyond. And I can shift this and do it a little bit more over here. And if this is the last kind of section through here, I really only need to go up into this area. There's, um, there's that step. Let's go ahead and look at the cards again. Peek at what we want to do here. We want to do this joy element. So I'm going to grab this card base and I'm going to cut it. And this is what I've come up with for the basic layout. I actually added that uh, light blue piece that I didn't use on the other page here. I've got these two strips that are accent pieces in the kit, and I think I'm going to banner cut this one, maybe even this one, I'm not sure. Um, but I want the joy to be further up instead of down on this piece, because I'm picturing having a photo here too. So a photo, 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 and another one here. And instead of having this be a frame, I'm just going to have it be a layer, so that when I add my photo in, I can just put it right on top. How fun. I thought I was recording and I wasn't. So I got a little further <laughs> without showing you what I was doing. Sorry about that. So what I've got here are um, all my pieces in place. I did a little banner cut on the end of this and made sure that it was lining up parallel with the top edge of this photo mat. Um, I added these elements, popped these guys up with dimensionals 
The, this J I had to kind of put half dimensionals on because it's a narrower piece, but I have one dimensional here and one dimensional here. And then I just kind of made them whimsical, you know, kind of um, playful on how I mounted them, just kind of like how I did on this card. I did a banner cut on this piece, but not on this one, because from here to here, it lined up with the edge of the early espresso mat. I'm going to just go ahead and keep these on here. These are going to be extra photo mats. So I've got the white photo mat now, and then I've got the early espresso on top. And then when I want to add a photo, then I'll be able to see that I've got, um, you know, the brown and the white edge matting all of my photos like this. I was also careful to make sure that I didn't put adhesive right in this area so I could slide my photos underneath there. Um, same thing here on this corner. Whenever you overlap and do sort of a um, playful look like this, you want to make sure that you're allowing room for tucking of, you know, your, your layers. So the measurements, this white base, this white base, and this white base, these are all half sheets from the cards in the kit. And um, they, they measure four and a quarter in the short direction by five and a half. So four and a quarter, five and a half, four and a quarter, five and a half. The layers on top are four by five and a quarter. So just a quarter inch shorter in all of those directions. So four by five and a quarter, four by five and a quarter, and then this is four, and it goes up to two and three quarters inches, okay? This frame piece that comes in the kit that I used as a mat, it measures three and a half inches in the widest direction and three and a quarter inches in the shorter direction. So I made this a quarter inch smaller, so now it's three and a quarter here by three inches. And now I've got all my mats, all my layers on there. I'm going to be adding in some pieces that I've punched out, and you kind of already saw a peek at it, but these are pieces from this thing here, right? So I started punching them out. I punched them out with a one inch circle punch. Stampin' Up! no longer carries the one inch circle punch, at least right now it does not, but this one inch size is perfect for punching out those pieces which layer perfectly onto these guys here. And if we look at what we used for stenciling, right, you could even take these, punch them out, and layer them behind so that they peek through like that. Really fun, right? So you could do that, you know, here and there throughout and have a really fun card or a really fun element. I'm gonna go ahead and use these on top of the snowflakes um, that I already used my blending brush on to kind of do that little background piece. And what I've done is I've stamped them with the snowflake stamp that comes in the kit. So it lines up really well with the, um, the shape. And we can just kind of tuck it here and there. Let's see here, let me lift this one up. So there, you know, we can just kind of add them here and there on the page, and we have these fun little snowflakes that line up with the background design. So I'm going to go ahead and add these. So I added some festive pearls in the centers of the snowflakes that are full, and then I added some here just the same way that I had added them on here. They're, they were the gold ones instead of the, um, instead of the silver. So yes, these two cards... The elements from them inspired this page. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, there is a part one for this. So you'll want to make sure that you look in the description of the video and click on that link so that you can see the cards that I made previously. Now that you've watched this video, I hope you can see that there is so much more to these kits and meets the eye. With just a few extra supplies and some imagination, you can go beyond and make so much more. Want to give these paper pumpkin kits a try? They're just $23.50 plus tax per month in the U.S. Shipping is included. You control which months you get your kits, and there's no commitment or obligation. And by clicking on my personalized link below and starting your subscription with me as your demonstrator, you'll have access to my exclusive paper pumpkin project ideas too. What's in store next month? 
a coordinating kit titled From the North Pole. This November Paper Pumpkin festive kit includes supplies to make 12 fun, sparkly, 2 inch by 3 inch gift tags, four of three different designs. Do you need some unique Christmas packaging to round out your gifting? We've got you covered also with our exclusive optional North Pole Sacks add-on product sold separately. 12 four by six food safe paper bags featuring a festive crumb cake design that coordinates with both the October and November paper pumpkin kits. Thank you for watching. It builds creativity to think outside the box. <laughs> To access Paper Pumpkin Kit ideas that I'll share in the future, be sure that you're subscribed to my YouTube channel and my website because I share even more each month in other special blog posts. In fact, click on my website link below so that you can access the visual supply list and view close-up photos of all of these ideas that I shared today. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye.